Hello everyone and welcome to DevNet Create. In this segment, we are going to bring forward to you stories of people from all around the globe who have used tech for good. I'm Shweta, developer advocate at Cisco DevNet. And joining me today from Assam, India, we have Sulab Agarwal. Hi Sulab, thanks for being here with us today. Hi Shweta, thank you. Sulab, uh, tell me about your project COVIDNet and also how do you come up with this idea? COVIDNet is a vaccine slot availability visualizer and bot for Pan India, which shows which centers in the area have available vaccination slots over the next week. It also indicates the number of slots available and the vaccine brands that are being administered at each center. It was built on top of the COVID APIs provided by the government. So how did it come up with this idea? At the start of May 2021, my parents were struggling to book their vaccination slot. It was challenging to find availability. I realized that by using my skills, I could come up with a solution that would make the process easier. So starting on a clean slate while balancing my work, com work commitments at Cisco, I started developing a web app and bot to make finding a vaccine in India less stressful. Wow, that's, that's really amazing. Especially we know that uh, last year India had experienced a very severe wave of COVID-19. So uh, just out of curiosity, Sulab, you are a network engineer and the application which you have built right from scratch, it requires a lot of developer skills. So I'm very curious to know about your developer journey and how did you come across uh, this app building? So uh, I've always been a curious individual, like working on new technologies to innovate and solve problems. I used to do this develop websites and IS apps in my college days. Joining Cisco, I started working on actual customer projects and then comes DevNet. I started to learn and apply my DevNet skills in my role working on top of the customer projects. So the developer has always been there in me, building new things from nothing during my leisure time. And what better than using one's knowledge and giving back to the community? Wow, so very nicely said. So can you share with us any technical roadblocks which you came across while working on this project? I'm sure there are many. Yes, uh, there were. As I, I was, I, as I was all doing it by myself, and at times I used to spend the whole night solving the issue, like scheduling something or some bug issue coming in or users calling me in. But the zeal to help people around me and the community as a whole with my DevNet skills helped me overcome and make that actual impact. So when was the first time that you realized that this application has really started making a huge impact on everyone? I realized when people started calling me, like that was really great what I'm doing and they really liked it and recommended it to others as well. So one instance was that the bot was being used by the security guards. They called me and they really liked it. So those were such things that helped me know that it is being looked on. And one such stats can be, it was being used by over 22 plus states in India. Wow, and I also read in your blog on Cisco website that you had around more than 4,000 email alerts being sent within few months of your application being launched. So that, that is a huge number and also a huge impact. So Sulab, do you already have a next challenge that you want to take up? Yes, Shweta, I'm working on it. I come from northeastern part of India, Assam. Here you can find one on rhinos, rivers, polar gibbons, etc. It's endless, trust me. If I would start naming the species, it's endless. And hence, I've been trying to do wildlife conservation, which are currently endangered species. Currently, as I move back to my town, right? With hybrid work coming, coming along, we all can do that. In all, I'm trying to bridge the gap with technology, with my skills at heart. That's what at Cisco we do, bridge the gap with technology. And yes, we all can do that. Exactly. So, so Lab, I think your story would definitely inspire other network engineers, developers, and everyone else. Thank you so much for sharing it us with today. And thank you so much also for joining us for this interview segment. And I'll meet you all next in our upcoming segment. So stay tuned.
Welcome to DevNet Create. I have with me today Eric and Lou from Team Encom. They are Cisco Eco Partners and have recently participated in a DevNet Innovation Hackathon where they presented an innovative use case which not only secured them a winning place, but the use case also tackles a big social issue. Let's hear from them what the solution is all about. 안녕하십니까. 2021년 시스코 APJC 대부넷 이노베이터 1위를 하게 된 한국 앵컴 팀의 루쿠정 전희찬입니다. 이번 해커톤의 머라키 인사이트 대시보드라는 프로젝트 이름으로 참가하였습니다. 지금도 어디선가 길을 잃고 헤매고 있을 아이들을 위해 개발하게 되었습니다. 한국은 산면이 바다인 아름다운 나라입니다. 해마다 많은 관광객들이 한국을 찾고 대표 관광지인 부산을 방문합니다. 우리는 부산에 위치해 있고 인기 많은 해수욕장이 떠올랐으며 이슈를 생각해 봤습니다. 그것은 놀러온 아이들이 길을 잃고 헤매는 것입니다. 아이들에게 2차 사고가 발생할 수 있다고 생각했고 여기서 가장 중요한 것은 신속 정확성이라고 생각했습니다. 그렇게 주제를 선정하여 시스코의 기술과 협력하여 어떤 아이디어를 낼지 고민 끝에 시스코 머라키 장비를 이용한 리아 찾기라는 아이디어를 냈습니다. 이어서 앵컴 팀의 에릭 리가 설명하겠습니다. 안녕하십니까. 앵컴 팀의 에릭 리 이석권입니다. 머라키 인사이트 대시보드는 크게 세 가지 기능으로 구현하였습니다. 머라키 와이파이를 응용한 빅데이터 대시보드, 머라키 카메라를 응용한 얼굴 인식 기술, 그리고 시스코 API를 응용한 웹X 알림 등으로 구성하였습니다. 어, 해수욕장 뿐만 아니라 유동인구가 많은 지역은 항상 위화가 많이 발생을 합니다. 대시보드는 머라키 와이파이 장비의 API 및 위치 정보 API를 이용하여 AP 및 무선 사용 데이터 트래픽 정보를 분석하여 시각화된 그래프를 만들었습니다. 이때 사용된 대시보드는 어, API는 어, 스프링 배치를 어, 이용하였고 위치 정보는 어, 로케이션 데이터 API를 앱및 그래프, 그래프는 자바 기반의 빅데이터를 활용하였습니다. 이후 해당 지역 중심으로 모라키 카메라와 얼굴 인식 딥러닝 기술을 응용하여 이하 사진과 머라키 사진 속 이하와 일치하는지 판단합니다. 어, 이때 사용된 얼굴 인식 기술은 라벨드 페이즈 인더 와일드 기준으로 99.38%의 정확도를 가진 딥 라이버 최첨단 얼굴 인식 기능을 파이썬 오픈 소스로 활용하였습니다. 어, 마지막으로 미아와 얼굴이 일치한다고 판단할 경우 시스코 웹엑스를 통해 해당 머라키 카메라 속의 미아의 캡처 이미지와 시간, 어, 머라키 AP의 위치 데이터, 나아가 동선 등을 알려줄 수 있게 구현하였습니다. 이 아이디어를 통해 미아 찾기 뿐만 아니라 어, 나아가 범죄 예방이나 해결 등 국가적으로 더 좋은 일에 기여할 수 있었으면 좋겠습니다. 감사합니다. Thank you for listening to stories where tech is used for good. If you want to hear more stories like these, you can check out after even recordings or even catch them live as Devnet Create rolls into other regional waves. Stay tuned for more fun stuff. Hello from Mumbai. And hello from Tel Aviv, Israel. Thank you everyone for joining us. Orain is here today to share his story about one of the projects he's recently been working on. And the name of that project is Out of the Depths. So Orain, why don't you tell us a bit more about what this project is about? Wonderful. Thank you, Swela. We're talking about the beginning of COVID and all of the restrictions and lockdowns and basically everyone were quite afraid of the pandemic. And yet um, people experience losses in their families for the loved ones. And because of the lockdown and the COVID restrictions, people weren't able to get together and just support each other in this time of grief. At that point, one of the nonprofit organization we work with called Netive Udi came up with the Out of Deaths project. What they wanted to do is to provide support and a platform for people to be able to get that support and connect with their families during that um, incredibly challenging time. 
whether the death is COVID related or not, just during COVID, you can't really get together for that, uh, for that matter. So on the technical side, what we as Cisco provided is we provided WebEx as a platform for them to be able to just have a chat, open a, open a window, get, instead of getting people into their homes, getting them virtually into their homes using WebEx as a platform. Now, because we did not want to assume that any everyone that uh, requires the, uh, the support knows how to operate WebEx, we created accounts for them so that they won't be limited by a free limited account and every 40 minutes or so need to open a new room. We created accounts for them. Now, as a volunteer, what we need to do is get, is first of all, talk with those families that just experienced a loss, uh, get some details from them, and then create an account for them. As a volunteer, creating that account required us to use the WebEx admin portal uh, in order to create one an account for each fa uh, grieving family. That took some time because just even for someone who is um, who is technically proficient, it's still learning a new dashboard. And we're talking about volunteers that do not operate WebEx on a daily on a daily basis. So what we created for them, we created a chatbot where they can communicate using WebEx Teams. They can just enter some of the details we need for, the, for that account, and the account will be created for them automatically without the volunteer requiring to enter, uh, to enter the WebEx admin portal, enter all of the details one by one manually. So that allowed the organization to have much less technical oriented people volunteer because before they needed someone experienced enough to understand what he's doing on WebEx. And all of a sudden it became so easy, just anyone, anyone can operate the system. And it allowed us to provide those grieving families a significantly quicker response to their request for, um, for WebEx account. Wow. I mean, this is an amazing project. And I know there might be some technical difficulties which you face, but even along with the technical difficulties, did you have some different experiences which you got to experience in getting involved at such grassroots level projects and actually dealing with knowing so many stories about people grieving. How, how was your overall experience over here? So that was, I think that was for me, the more challenging part because on the technical part, it was, uh, it was creating WebEx accounts. It's, uh, it's nothing, but being exposed to all of those family and the support they needed it on one side it was it was quite challenging on the other seeing the appreciation they had being all of a sudden able to communicate with their families was uh, was entirely worth it wow so Aurin, is this project still going on and if anyone is interested in maybe helping out or volunteering to such kind of projects not not just this one specifically, but in general, do you have any leads on how they can do their bit? Uh, yes. So the organization names is Netive Udi. We'll have a, I'll uh, send a link for it. And it's available for Cisco employees. It's available through Bright Funds. Uh, for non-Cisco employees, we'll can, we can get you in contact with that organization. Uh, right now, thankfully, the situation here with the vaccination rate is much much better than it was a year ago um but still there there are families that need the support and regardless to the fact whether we can meet in person or not the the professional support and the emotional support and spiritual support the organization is providing is not going away and this is something COVID or not uh, dealing with grief is something challenging and anyone that needs support can get it for the organization definitely Thank you, Oren, for sharing this story of tech for good with us. I'm sure it will help people in inspiring others and themselves and trying to get more hands on with such volunteer opportunities. Thank you for being us with today. Thank you. Thank you.